anybody who's ever been there. I know what a neurological chaos would look like. It would look like bright lights, moving patterns, colored this, something that. It would not be ruins, landscapes, machines, paintings, works of art, building plans, weapons, bits of, uh, uh, of manufactured technological detritus. These things are too coherent. They're objects in some kind of superstructure of the mind. And for me, this was the revelation. I didn't get into this business by being an airhead or a, or a screwball. My attitude was always, if it's real, it can take the pressure. You know, you don't have to pussyfoot around the real thing. If they're telling you, you know, oh, you must lower your voice and avert your gaze or this and that, then you're probably in the presence of crap. Because the real thing is real. It doesn't demand that you, you adjust your opinion to suit it. It's real. That means it is preeminent. That means it sets the agenda. And I studied yoga. I wandered around in the East. I was fast shuffled by beady-eyed little men in dotis. I know the whole spiritual supermarket and rigmarole. And, and I, I find nothing there to interest me on the level of, you know, five grams of psilocybin mushrooms in silent darkness. I mean, that's where the pedal meets the metal. That's where the rubber meets the road. And the inspiration for me to get up and talk to an audience like this simply comes from the fact that I cannot believe that this could be kept under wraps the way it has. I mean, I kidded with you earlier that they would make sex illegal if they could. Well, they can't, so it isn't. But the psychedelic experience is as central to understanding your humanness as having sex, or having a child, or having responsibilities, or, or having hopes and dreams. And yet it is illegal. We are somehow told we are infantilized. We're told, you know, you can wander around within the sanctioned playpen of ordinary consciousness. And we have some intoxicants over here. If you want to mess yourself up, we've got some scotch here and some tobacco and red meat and some sugar and a little TV and so forth and so on. Uh, but, but these boundary-dissolving... Uh, hallucinogens that give you a sense of unity with your fellow man and nature are somehow forbidden. This is an outrage. It's a sign of cultural immaturity, and the fact that we tolerate it is a sign that we are uh, living in a society as oppressed as any society in the past. a short question, but I think it's really important. We're not, my thing is not about my opinion or what I saw in Africa or anything like that. This is, get it straight, this is about an experience, not my experience, your experience. It's about an experience which you have, like getting laid or like going to Africa. You must do the experience. Otherwise, it's, it's just whistling past the graveyard. And we're not talking about something like being born again or meeting the flying saucers or something like that where good works and prayer are the method. No, if you take a sufficient dose of an active compound, it will deliver itself to you on the money. If it doesn't work, take more. Nobody is in a position to dismiss this just because it didn't work for them on one or two tries. This is an art. It's an art. It's something you coax 
into existence. I mean, you have to learn to make love, you have to learn to speak English. Anything worth doing is an art that is acquired. This is part of our birthright, perhaps the most important part of our birthright. These substances will deliver. It is the confoundment of, of psychology and science generally. And that's why it's so touchy for cultural institutions. But you are not a cultural institution. You are a free and independent human being. And these things have your name written on them, what it is uh, worth. Language is partially the key here. We cannot move into a reality that we cannot describe. If we can't describe a world, we can't be there. And so the interesting place to be is at the cutting edge of language. And it's interesting that the legacy of the 1960s is a legacy of language evolution. I mean, concepts like ego trip, vibe, uh, bummer, uh, so forth and so on. I mean, we sneer at these concepts, but there was no word for these things before. Once there is a word, then that word is like a stepping stone out into the fog. And as long as we let the establishment set the language agenda, we will be imprisoned in the tiny, rather pedestrian world of consumerism and schlocko values that the establishment has prepared for us. So the way I think of these psychedelics, or a different way, is that they're catalysts for the imagination. Catalysts to say what has never been said, to see what has never been seen, to draw, paint, sing, sculpt, dance, and act what has never before been done, to push the envelope of creativity and language. And what's really important is, I call it the felt presence of direct experience, which is a fancy term which just simply means we have to stop consuming our culture. We have to create culture. Don't watch TV. Don't read magazines. Don't even listen to NPR. Create your own road show. The, the, the nexus of space and time where you are now is the most immediate sector of your universe. And if you're worrying about Michael Jackson or Bill Clinton or somebody else, then you are disempowered. You're giving it all away to icons. Icons which are maintained by an electronic media. So that, you know, you, you want to dress like X or have lips like Y or something. This is, this is shit-brained, this kind of thinking. That is all cultural diversion. And what is real is you and your friends and your uh, associations, your highs, your orgasms, your hopes, your plans, your fears. And we're, we're told, no, we're unimportant, we're peripheral, get a degree, get a job, get a this, get a that, and then you're a player. You don't even want to play in that game. You want to reclaim your mind and get it out of the hands of the cultural engineers who want to turn you into a half-baked moron consuming all this trash that's being manufactured out of the bones of a dying world. Where is that at? Yeah, over here. Well, religion is simply the, uh, the word we use to describe our intuition that there is something outside the realm of culture and, uh, and uh, the, the three-dimensional surfaces of things, that there is a hidden dimension to reality. Call it a plan, a purpose, a loving God, uh, a, a cosmos instead of a chaos. And psychedelics, I believe, reveal a greater order than the order of the human world. This is why the way I do them is either in darkness, which means surrounded by the body, my body, which is part of nature, or in nature itself, 
in the mountains, at the beach, in the jungle. Because what we are lacking existentially is any sense of order, meaning, and beauty in the world because the society we're living in has no order or beauty or meaning. It's just a scam and a rap 